Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back on the bracket breakdown. Breaking down each section of the bracket the best I can, I guess. Just doing, doing what I can to break it down. We're moving North Carolina on. Not even going to take a look at that. We'll take a look at USC Providence. Take a look at key wins. Providence, the better uh, RPI um, rank and the lower BPI rank. Did better in conference. Play a little bit better defense. Um... Providence averages about the points that uh, USC gives up per game. Uh, Providence 1-7 against the top 25. USC 0-6. Uh, Providence 1 win coming against Villanova. And we'll take a look at the notable results. USC lost to Oregon twice. Lost to Utah twice. Lost by 10 to Xavier. Uh, beat Arizona once. So Arizona wasn't a top 25 team when they beat them. Or Arizona's not, uh, Arizona's not a top 25 team now. But, I mean, is that how this versus the top 25 is, what am I trying to say, is determined? Um, but they lost by 20, by 22 to Cal. They split with Oregon State. Uh, they beat Wichita State. That's a nice win for USC. And they beat Colorado by 7. Uh, Providence went 1 for 3 against Villanova. Got beat by Xavier twice. Uh, they did beat Arizona, so a common opponent there. They each have beaten Arizona once. Uh, they got beat by Seton Hall twice. Um, they beat Butler three times. And uh, they lost by 13 to Michigan State. Uh, USC, I don't know a whole lot of this thing, but you can't get a little bit from here. Uh, they, they have no senior starters, uh, which could, like they say, cause some trouble in the early going. Uh, they, they are a good three-point shooting team. Uh, Jordan McLaughlin is the only player that I really know for USC um, and shoots a three-point very well. Uh, they're a good free-throw shooting team, so that is always good in the tournament, have a good free-throw shooting team. I know a lot about Providence, Chris Dunn, Ben Bentel, uh, the two kind of headliners for Providence. Um, the real reason they lost to Villanova in the tournament, Bentel and Dunn just could not get going. Uh, Chris Dunn, arguably the best point guard in the entire NCAA, up there with Tyler Uless. Um, probably, is Denzel Valentine really a point guard? Are we really going the, what, he started out as a, he started out as a small forward, now he's a point guard, because Travis Trice was their point guard for a while, um, and really Bryn Forbes is the, I guess, I guess Valentine is their point guard, but, does anybody really look at him as a point guard anymore? We we moved him to point guard. It's kind of debatable, but I like Chris Dunn and Ben Bentel to take down McLaughlin and, and USC. Indiana Chattanooga. I uh, know a little bit about Chattanooga. know a lot about Indiana. Chattanooga has a nice BPI rating. Uh, that's always good. They are 1-1 one one against the top 25. Indiana only 2-2 two and two against the top 25. I would have thought Indiana would have had a much better record than that, but they, they did play a soft. Big Ten schedule. They played one of the softer Big Ten schedules. Uh, who did Chattanooga beat in the top 25? They beat Dayton and Georgia. Those are two nice wins for uh, Chattanooga all the way. It was at Dayton and it was at Georgia that they won both games by two. That's very impressive for Chattanooga. Uh, the loss by 20 to Iowa State, not so impressive. Um, they uh, Indiana... They lost to Michigan State by 19. They beat Maryland by 18. Uh, see, they only played Purdue twice. Or they only played Purdue once, Michigan State once, Maryland once. Uh, they lost by 20 to Duke. They The only good team in the conference they played twice was Iowa. Uh, which is kind of which shows that the Big Ten it's, it was a soft schedule. Uh, they did beat Notre Dame, and they split with Wisconsin. Uh, the more I look at this, I do like Chattanooga. Um, I wish they would show their road record here in the stats, road and home records, and neutral court. Uh, but I do like I do like Chattanooga in this matchup. We're gonna roll Chattanooga in the in the bracket breakdown. Um, now that I've looked a little bit more in depth to Chattanooga here in the video, do do like Chattanooga. Stony Brook, not a horrible team. Did not play a team in the top 25, which is kind of a little bit bad for Stony Brook. Kentucky only two and two, like Indiana, against the top 25. Uh, Stony Brook went 14 and 2 in conference, 10 and 2 down the stretch. Kentucky 9 and 3, both pretty good uh, goes of it. Kentucky lost by six at Kansas. They beat Duke by 11. Uh, they beat Louisville by two. Split with A&M. 
Uh, they beat Florida twice, they split with Vandy, and they beat Alabama three times. Stony Brook has a horrible loss to Notre Dame. A not too bad loss to Vanderbilt. A decent win over Princeton and an okay win over Hofstra. Um, I don't like Stony Brook at all to beat Kentucky, so we're moving Kentucky on. Then we have Notre Dame versus Michigan or Tulsa. Notre Dame, BPI rank of a 32, RPI of a 30. RPI 32, BPI 33, four and five against top 25. Very good for Notre Dame. They did struggle down the stretch, going seven and five, which means they were at 1.14 and six, uh, much better than their current record. Uh, they kind of struggled a little bit down the stretch, going seven and five. Um, they give up a lot of points at 70 points per per game. Uh, notable results here: they lost to Virginia by 11. They lost twice to Miami. They split with North Carolina. Uh, they they beat Louisville, they beat Duke twice, they lost by eight, lost Indiana, they beat Iowa, and the kind of blemish on the big blemish on Notre Dame's record, the loss to Monmouth. So once again, we're rolling Michigan, we're taking them in. I think Michigan is starting to get their crap together, play a little bit better. Uh, they had a decent showing off against uh, Purdue, and I think Purdue's a better team than Indiana or than Notre Dame. So I think Michigan's got a chance to get it done. Uh, and then we can move on to Press Virginia and Stephen F. Austin. Uh, Stephen F. Austin making a return, went 18-0 in conference. I believe there's something like 60-1 in conference the last three years. Uh, they are a confident team, been to the tournament, know how to play. Um, RPI and BPI pretty close. Same with uh, West Virginia. 10 and 7 for West Virginia. 70 and 71 for Stephen F. Austin. What I meant, because I know someone will probably take it out of context. What I meant by close, I mean like Stephen F. Austin's BPI is close to their RPI, and so is West Virginia's BPI is close to their RPI. That's what I meant, not like that 10 is close to 70. Oops. Let's bring that back up. Look at notable loss, wins and losses for Stephen F. Austin. That's kind of the big thing. Wow, they got waxed by Baylor by 42. Holy crap. In Northern Iowa, they lost to Northern, at Northern Iowa by 10. Wow, they got mutilated by Baylor. Holy, holy moly. I did not, did not see that. They went 1-2 and two against Kansas. They went 1-2 and two against Oklahoma. Uh, they beat Baylor twice, beat Iowa State twice. They lost twice to Texas. That's weird. They lost twice to Texas? Uh, they beat Texas Tech twice. They they smashed San Diego State. They lost to Virginia by 16, and they beat Baylor twice. I think I already said they beat Baylor twice. We're taking West Virginia over uh, Stephen F. Austin. Moving on to Wisconsin and Pittsburgh. Uh, BPI and RPI is pretty close between these two teams. Um, one in seven against the top 25 for Pitt. Three and six for. Wisconsin. Wisconsin played very well down the stretch, going nine and three after a bad start. Pitt five and seven down the stretch, not so good. Uh, Wisconsin split with Michigan State, got blasted by Oklahoma. Um, split with Maryland, lost to Weiss to Purdue. Split with Indiana, beat Iowa, beat VCU, beat Michigan, and beat Syracuse. So they have some quality wins on their resume. Pitt beat Duke. They, beat, they lost to Virginia, lost twice to North Carolina, lost to Miami, they beat Notre Dame in South Bend, they lost to Louisville twice, and they lost to Purdue by 13. I'm starting to lean a little bit closer to going with Wisconsin's matchup or sticking with Pitt. We don't really need to take a look at Weber State and Xavier, but we'll take a look at Xavier here. 3-3 three and three against the top 25. RPI rank of 7, a BPI rank of 14, went 14 and 4 in the Big East, a 9 and 3 down the stretch. Not exactly what I, I think they had planned at one point, number 5 in the uh, in the country. Um, they have notable wins. They split with Villanova, um, I believe, with each team winning in the opponent's home court. Uh, they they blasted Dayton. They went they only went one and two against Seton Hall. Seton Hall getting the best of them the last two meetings. Um, Providence they beat twice. Uh, Cincinnati they beat USC. They beat they beat Michigan. They so they beat USC, Cincinnati, and Michigan all by double digits. And they beat Butler twice. So had some nice wins over some field teams in the field. I like Xavier against uh, Pittsburgh. So West Virginia, Michigan, Michigan. 
Um, Michigan and Notre Dame both, while West Virginia's press should disrupt a team not as good as them. Michigan and Notre Dame have the shooters to beat the press. Notre Dame likes to walk the ball up more than push it, push it. Um, they would prefer to get into their half-court offense and run a nice play, but they do have the ability to break the press and knock down a three, as well as Michigan. But that does not mean I'm taking West Virginia, or I'm taking them over West Virginia. Kentucky Chattanooga, interesting matchup, but Kentucky edges them out. Uh, and then Providence, North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina, the number one in the BPI. Notable wins and losses for North Carolina. They split with Virginia. Uh, they blasted Miami, beat Maryland, uh, lost at Louisville. They split with Duke, split with Notre Dame. They got a loss to Texas. And the hugest, the big win for Northern Iowa, who upset North Carolina. I remember I watched that game. But uh, as much as I like the Friars, Providence, if they were in Virginia's bracket, no problem. I'd be taking the Friars. But North Carolina moves on to play Kentucky in the Sweet 16. So now it comes down to Kentucky and North Carolina, Xavier and West Virginia. So we can show how these teams match up. Uh, North Carolina, Kentucky, uh, Kentucky 12 in both the BPI and the RPI went 13 and 5 in conference. North Carolina only 4 and 3 against the top 25. You'd expect a little bit better record out of a one seed than 4 and 3, but uh, North Carolina seems to be getting it all together. Kentucky though a nice team that could upset them, but I like uh, Marcus Page and I like the big men down down low with Meeks and uh, I can't even think of all you know what you know what I'm talking about. Um, the big men uh, for North Carolina, I like Bryce Johnson. Um, and I think North Carolina gets it done against Kentucky. I think it's a shootout. It's a good game. Um, and then I like West Virginia against Xavier, but we'll take a look and compare. West Virginia 7 in the BPI, uh, Xavier 7 in the RPI, uh, 10 in the BPI for West Virginia, 14 in the BPI for Xavier. We are going to take West Virginia to beat the Musketeers. Then that sets up Press Virginia against North Carolina in the Elite Eight Uh uh, what am I trying to say? West Virginia averages about three less points per game than North Carolina, but also holds opponents three points lower than North Carolina. Uh, I think this would be a heck of a matchup if we get it. They each are um, one above uh, 500 against the top 25. Uh, West Virginia has played a lot more tougher opponents, um, but I believe that uh, North Carolina gets it done in a very close game against uh, West Virginia, setting up our first two teams into the uh, final four being Kansas and North Carolina. In the next one, we will do the Midwest region with Virginia uh, and Michigan State. And then following that, we'll be doing the uh, West region with Oregon and Oklahoma. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys are enjoying these bracket breakdowns. I actually having a fun time kind of talking to myself, thinking them through. Uh, and I hope you guys are enjoying them. Uh, let me know if there's any teams that you want me to do a little bit more research into and maybe talk about them. I'll probably have one final video on Thursday talking about some of my biggest... I'll probably have a video talking about... I don't know if it'll be Thursday, but I'll have a video talking about my biggest sleepers as well as uh, teams to watch out for teams to not bet the bank on and stuff like that maybe i don't know i don't know how this is going to go but i love college basketball i love the tournament um and uh you can see by all the videos i'm putting out uh but i hope you guys enjoyed uh and we will be back with the virginia michigan state bracket shortly so peace out guys